Hello, I'm going to show you now very quickly how you can use raw astronomical data files to produce very nice colour images like the sort that you see on the Hubble website. So if we go to the Space Telescope website provided by ESA, and you can see there a nice picture of Hubble at the top, I'm going to use a piece of software called the FITS Liberator. It's a free download and you can either download the standalone version which is this Fitz Liberator 3, or over here there's a link on their menu for downloads, so you'll just click on that, so you can download Fitz Liberator 3, uh, or you can download other uh, versions, so on the, the side menu, download past versions, and if you want to download, uh, there's a badly spelt thing on the, on the ESA website, uh, if you want to download uh, a previous version, uh, it tells you, gives you information there on which plugin is best for you. These are for the plugins are for use with Adobe Photoshop, and the standalone version you can you just need to have Java installed on a Mac or on a Windows computer. So where do we get our? Once you've downloaded that, we'll need to get some astronomical data. So you can go to the uh, Las Cumbres Observatory Global Telescope Network website or lcogt.net, and on the front page, if you click on Observations. You can browse through our full public archive and download any of the images and data that you like. The first page that comes up on observations shows you recent observations, trending observations and popular ones. Um, I don't particularly like the look of any of those so I think I'm going to search for an observation. I'm going to search for observations of the Eagle Nebula. And there you go, the suggestions come up with Eagle Nebula. I'm going to use Eagle Nebula so that it ties in with our tutorial on using DS9 with a free piece of image manipulation software called the GIMP. Right, here we go. This gives us a tiled list of other people's observations of the Eagle Nebula made with the LCOGT network. And these are colour images which look pretty good, but they're only very quick automatic pipeline reductions. So a uh, computer has decided on what levels to use, but hopefully we can do a better job. So if we click on one of these little eyes, it gives us some information about this. So this was taken with Maui Astronomy Club, and it was on Fox Telescope North, and it was 180 seconds. Uh, that one looks pretty good. The stars in the middle, a little bit washed out. Okay, this one looks pretty good from Simon Langton Grammar School for Boys. Stars look quite sharp. There's a little bit of charge bleed there, but I don't think that'll be a problem for us. We're going to download these files. You can uh, download the files directly from these links here, or if you hover over the JPEGs, you can see a uh, very quick look at what the individual ones look like. So the red has far more detail in it than the blue and the green. So I'm going to right click on each of these FITS files links, and we're going to download that. So I'm going to save link as, I'll we'll save it to the desktop. Now remember to right click on uh, those and choose save as, otherwise if you just click on it it'll start loading in your browser and it'll uh, look like junk. Incidentally if you want to use any of these images for, um, for non-profit then there's a, a credit line here that you can use and there's also a Creative Commons license so you know exactly where you are. Here are three images on the desktop. They've got rather strange looking names. Uh, that's the, the red, the green and the blue there. So I'm going to show you how to use the Fitz Liberator with Adobe Photoshop Elements now. So I've already got it loaded up and there we go. Because I've installed the plugin already It'll recognise FITS as an image type of file, and I can open each one in turn. And we get this little pop-up. If you've installed just the standalone version uh, without the plugin for Photoshop Elements, you'll just see this uh, window that I've got here. So it's, it's the same for both ways. Some things to notice, we've got to choose 8-bit for channels and um, we can play around now with some of these things. So at the moment it looks quite unimpressive, you just see some dots of stars and you can't see any of the nice nebulosity from the, from the eagle. 
So we might want to change uh, this thing here called a stretch function. We'll change that to log. We can see a little bit more there. Might want to click on auto scaling. That hasn't really helped us. So let's bring in the white and the black levels a little bit more. There we go. If we relax the black level, we can start to see we can start to see the eagle a bit more. You know, we want the background to remain as black as possible because space is black after all, but without hiding the details of the nebula. So, right, let's click OK on that one. And it's loaded it in for us. Now I'm going to open up uh, the other two and do something similar. So that you can see these more easily, I'm going to just tile all three. Unfortunately, you can see that there's a little bit of what we call charge bleed. So these stars are just a little bit too bright in these exposures, and that's what these streaks are here. So now I have to be able to add colour information into, onto these images, and I have to click on each one in turn, and then go to Image, Mode, RGB colour, so change it from grayscale. It won't change the look of it, but it'll allow us to add colours on top of that image. Right, I'm going to start with adding colour to the red image. So I'm going to make that full screen. Now we're going to use the Enhance menu item and adjust colour and then adjust hue and saturation. Very important thing to notice here is that you can click uh, on colorize. Once you've clicked colorize then we add these magic numbers which are appearing on your screen now. You can play around with these but uh, the numbers I'll give you are for straight red, green and blue but you could decide that you wanted to use purple and yellow instead of red, green and blue. This is the green image, so I'm going to do something similar. And finally, I'm going to do for the blue. Now to combine these three, I'm going to choose one of them as the bottom layer, so I think I'm going to choose, since we have it open, the blue. And let me just open up one of the others. So I'm going to, so I'm going to choose Select All, and then Edit, Copy, and go back to the blue layer. I'm just going to paste it. And a new layer has appeared here on the right. Change the name to green. Okay, now I'm going to open our red image. I'm going to go to select all and copy. And go back to this one, which already has, remember, this is the one with the two layers. Don't get it confused with the green one, which they look the same apart from the, the green one only has one layer. And I'm just going to paste that right on the top. Mark that one red. There we go, now we have three colour image. Now I need to do something special with the two top layers so that we can see through and uh, combine all the images. So at the moment all we're seeing is the top level and we're not seeing the ones below it. So in the, the layers tab over here I'm going to change it from saying normal to saying screen. And already we've got some good colour information there coming through. And then I'm going to do the same on the green layer. Remember to do this on uh, at least the top two layers. You don't need to do it on the bottom one because we're, we don't need to see through the bottom one to anything. And there we go. We've got a, a colour image already. Now you can see that that looks pretty good already. You can see lots of nice nebulosity. Um, 
but we might not be lined up particularly well. So I'm going to change the tool here to zoom in on some of the stars, maybe in this region here. And you can see that they've got a blue top and a red bottom, so they're not perfectly lined up. So I'm going to select the red one, I'm going to hide the green one, and I'm going to choose the Move tool over on the left there. And once you've selected the Move tool and highlighted one of the layers, it'll now start moving that layer. You can use the mouse to move it, but it's probably better if you use the arrow keys on your keyboard because you've got more precision there. So just move them up and down until the stars are nicely lined up. Those stars look pretty good to me. Now I'm going to hide the red layer and do something similar. So I've selected the green layer and I've also um, made sure that we can see it. That's what this little eye is. And uh, I've hidden the red layer and I've not selected it anymore. Be careful that you don't hide one and select another one because you'll, you'll end up moving it and not be able to see. So I'm now going to move the green layer with respect to the blue again. There we go. That was pretty spot on, I think. And we've got much nicer lined up image now. And we'll go back to zooming out. There we go. That's our nicely lined up color image. Very, very quick and has a very good result. If you now want to print this off or you want to use it in something else, this is still a, a special Photoshop file at the moment. So we're going to have to use flatten image. And it's flattened it so that on the right here you can see that there's only one layer. It's combined all those three layers into one. And we can save as, and we'll save it on the desktop as Eagle. And we just save it as a JPEG file and quality. And now let's compare that with what we had here. So this was the original image and Actually, in this case, it looks like the automated routine has done a pretty good job. Doing it yourself allows you more control and you can fiddle with the parameters to your heart's content and uh, tweak it so that it looks better. I've only done a very quick job here. You can download any of the images from the LCO GT archive. So have a go at recreating colour images of your favourite astronomical objects.